Turn to the book of Ephesians. I'm really doing what you might call uh, faith fundamentals, some foundational things that I think are so important to launch you into your greatness that God has for you. And he definitely has a greatness earmarked for you in 2019. He wants greatness to flow from your life. So if you look at Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm going to read these eight verses. You've read them many times before. But Paul first told us in the first chapter our position in Christ. But now he's trying to show just how much and how far gone you were. That you had no way to attain what God brought you to in and of yourself. He starts off and says, and you have he quickened. That word quickened means, means made alive, alive rather, or have, has given you life. Who were dead. He's talking about your nature now. He's not talking about you physically, because obviously he's talking to people who are living and breathing. But technically, spiritually, they were walking, and you and I were walking dead people. Spiritually. Wherein in times past you walked, how? According to the course of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. He's talking about the devil. The spirit that now work, worketh or works in the children of disobedience. Meaning that same spirit that used to dominate you is now dominating some of your loved ones. And some of the people that you love that are just as unsaved as you once were. Among whom also we all had our conversation. That word conversation means way of life. In times past, in the desires, that overweening desire for our flesh, the Bible calls it lust, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And here it is, the death sentence. And were by what? Nature the children of wrath, even as others. The prophet said, can a leper change his spot? Can an Ethiopian change his colors? These are rhetorical questions that demand only one response. No. Your color is who you are. You came that way, out of the womb. A leopard who spotted can't change the spots. That's how they came from the womb. You were by nature against God. And you weren't by yourself. That's why the Bible says, even as others. So imagine, as we were this morning, as we funeralized this precious sister, who was George's uh, lovely blood sister. She was stretched out in this casket. They did an outstanding job with her makeup. The clothing was perfect and everybody loved the way she looked. But how many know she was dead? I could have pinched her. I could have stabbed her. I could have shot the casket. I hate to sound so gory. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make a point. She would not have moved as lifelike as she looked. Why? She was dead. That's the condition of every one of us at one time. We were spiritually dead. No matter how much people told you about how great God was, it didn't mean a bit to you. It might have sounded nice, but you were dead. That's why that text is such a powerful text for most preachers. At some time in their life, they're going to preach that but God. Say, but God, who is rich in mercy. Why did he start off with me? mercy? Because mercy is giving you something that dead people can't earn or deserve. Dead. 
in trespasses and sin. He's quickened us. He made us alive in Christ. How did he do it? By grace. Hallelujah. You have been saved. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. And then he talks about what he did. The Bible says, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we didn't deserve it, we were dead. He made us alive. He quickened us together in Christ. And then he says, and he hath raised us up. How did he do it? Together. And made us sit where? Together. I always think about all the people sitting on a Boeing 767, all raised up together, all sitting together. I see that figuratively in terms of the work of the body of Christ. All of us have been raised up equally together. None of us knew how to get high. No one knew how to bring that plane down but the pilot. Jesus was the pilot. He raised us up and brought us together in heavenly places in Christ. So that the, in the ages to come, he says, he might show we're, we're going to be trophies unto the Lord. He's going to show what the goodness and the glory of God has done through the church because we are his workmanship. We are the examples of the power of God. And so that's what God did for you. You were dead. You were on your way and I to hell. But he justified you. And as I said in the sermon, I tell you, every time we preach justification, invariably somebody gets saved. Every time. It's just amazing. If you stick with the gospel, justification means that God blessed you even though you didn't deserve it. You couldn't earn it. It was something he conferred to you. He conferred to you. He counted you as righteous. You weren't righteous. He counted you as righteous.